Have you ever wondered what it takes to build a business from the ground up only to watch it crumble? This is the story of Mr. Steak, a venture that began with just a broiled steak, a baked potato, and a salad. It's a story filled with ambition, success, and unexpected turns. But how did this simple idea transform into an iconic American franchise, and what led to its dramatic fall? Stay tuned as we uncover the surprising twists and turns in Mr. Steak's journey. The Rise of Mr. Beloved Steak The story of Mr. Steak, an iconic American steakhouse, began in 1961 with a simple yet ambitious dream. Dottie and James A. Mather, after leaving their venture in the Leadership Training Institute Incorporated, got into the franchise consulting business. It was during this period they conceptualized a unique restaurant idea, serving broiled steak, a baked potato, and a tossed salad in a cafeteria style, complete with a theater galley for an open, transparent cooking experience. With this idea in mind, the Mathers moved to Denver to set up an office. James worked out a half-salary arrangement with his secretary, who also worked for other businesses, including a young attorney, Jim Sheeran, who would later join Mr. Steak's staff and become its president. Mr. Steak's concept quickly gained interest. Hoover Holland, an army cook and owner of Holland Insurance Agency, was captivated by the idea and brought in another former army cook, Ray Blise, to be the first manager. James then rallied support from visionary investors like engineer Chuck Wilson, helping turn their dream into reality. Their first location was in downtown Colorado Springs, at a site known as Failure Corner due to its history of unsuccessful businesses. Despite this, the team was undeterred. They decided on the company name Mr. Steak after a brainstorming session at Bell's Better Burgers. How did a location known as Failure Corner become the birthplace of a nationwide sensation? What's coming ahead will leave you in awe. With limited resources, they worked tirelessly on the restaurant's design and setup. John Roach, a successful artist, designed the iconic Steers Head logo. The team covered the windows with butcher paper, drawing attention with a coming soon sign alongside the logo. This modest beginning led to significant newspaper publicity. The opening day was nerve-wracking, with meat delivery arriving just in time for the lunch crowd. Despite initial challenges with meat quality, the business was an instant success. Within weeks, a retired colonel approached them for a franchise in Albuquerque, becoming part of the concept's development. When Mr. Steak began to grow, new challenges and opportunities emerged. But what were the critical decisions that shaped its future, and how did these choices start to impact the business? The answers might surprise you. Expansion and Challenges As Mr. Steak's popularity grew, plans for expansion began. However, this ambition made some partners nervous. Chuck Wilson sold his interest and was replaced by Milan Holbert. The third franchise in Denver was a milestone, being the first designed freestanding building. However, architectural design choices led to practical challenges, such as acoustics and customer comfort, which were later improved. After a year of trial and error, Mr. Steak made a big change. They shifted from a cafeteria style to full waitress service and even added lunch items to their menu. This change was driven by the recognition that the increasing number of working women and veterans preferred being served while dining. Another significant decision was regarding the quality control of their beef products. To ensure every steak was top-notch, Mr. Steak adopted the U.S. Department of Agriculture's guidelines, making sure each steak served was of the highest quality. The founders realized it was unrealistic to expect a manager to be an expert in all aspects of running a restaurant, including beef grading, a specialized skill in itself. So within their first year, the concept was refined, full waitress service using USDA choice beef only and a more diverse menu. To expand the franchise, Mr. Steak partnered with Partake Incorporated, a Chicago-based franchise marketing company. While Partake's area directors were effective in screening and selling, this led to uncontrolled expansion. The growth was based more on the locations of these directors rather than a logical, strategically planned growth, creating logistical challenges. During this time, significant additions were made to Mr. Steak's team. Hansel Kennedy and entrepreneur Don Foltz, who later became president of Mr. Steak in late 1968, joined the company. The organization also diversified its operations. A new building on Federal Boulevard was leased, MS Development was formed for construction inspection, and franchise accounting led by Lou Levinson was established for weekly accounting services for associates. Furthermore, 
National Marking and Leasing was established to handle equipment and food purchases. Key figures like Dale Thompson and the Sifo brothers from Rockford, Illinois joined the team, each bringing unique skills that propelled Mr. Stake's growth. Tom, as Vice President of Real Estate, and Lou, with his experience from the International Pancake House, as Vice President of Operations. In November 1968, Mr. Stake welcomed Don Stewart as Vice President of Marketing. Prior to Stewart's arrival, marketing and market research were outsourced to consulting firms. His background from Halverson Slade and experience with IBM brought new insights into marketing strategies and computer operations, adding a new dimension to the Mr. Stake brand. With Mr. Stake's growing popularity, especially in areas like Minneapolis, St. Paul, the brand's expansion was in full swing. His efforts were remarkable, leading to the establishment of 22 operating restaurants in the region. Meanwhile, in Rockford, Illinois, another Partake Area Director, Bob LaTurner, formed an investment group. They appointed Jack Ross, a young professional from Bell Telephone, as their investor-slash-manager. Jack, along with his wife Bonnie, opened the third freestanding restaurant designed by Mr. Stake. The Rockford restaurant was a stunning success, opening with a weekly gross of $5,000, far exceeding the initial target of $3,500. Such numbers were beyond the founders' wildest dreams, signaling Mr. Stake's potential in the competitive restaurant industry. This success sparked a nationwide expansion, and what seemed like a whirlwind, Mr. Stake started opening restaurants across the country. By 1969, riding on this momentum, 75 new restaurants were launched. Leadership Changes and Financial Struggles With a growing empire, Mr. Stake seemed unstoppable. But beneath the surface, trouble was brewing. We're about to dive into the moments that changed everything for Mr. Stake. In a dramatic leadership shift in 1981, Richard S. Jackson took the helm of Mr. Stake, signaling a new era for the company. James A. Mather continued his role as chairman and chief executive officer. At this point, the chain boasted 258 restaurants, most of them franchised. However, the leadership shuffle didn't stop there. In September 1984, Michael T. Fuller replaced Jackson as President and Chief Operating Officer. But the company was already grappling with financial difficulties. As Randall Pike stepped in as the new Chairman and CEO, the company faced a tough financial reality, with debts nearing $2 million, leading to a filing for Chapter 11 reorganization under the U.S. Bankruptcy Code. The company is spread across 36 states in Canada, operating 122 franchise Mr. Steak restaurants and 25 company-owned establishments. The financial trouble started when Mr. Stake took on the responsibility of backing many of its franchises' rental agreements. In a turn of events, in April 1992, Omnivest International, a Denver investment company, purchased the remaining assets of Jamco from the Denver Bankruptcy Court. The deal was for $140,000, with Omnivest assuming liabilities of about $260,000. This included 57 franchise Mr. Steak restaurants across 23 states. Attempting to breathe new life into the brand in 1993, Omnivest introduced the Mr. Steak's Fire Grill concept, aiming for a more upscale dining experience. Meanwhile, in central and western Michigan, former Mr. Steak locations were converted in 1991 into a new chain called Finley's, retaining much of the original Mr. Steak menu. This move followed the chain's early 1990s decline the decline of Mr. Beloved Steak. Despite efforts to adapt and reinvent itself, Mr. Steak's story was heading towards an unexpected conclusion. What caused the once thriving chain to lose its way? The final chapter of Mr. Steak came to a close in 2009 when the last restaurant, located in St. Charles, Missouri, shut its doors. The building that once housed the final Mr. Steak was raised in July 2022, making the end of an era for this once beloved steakhouse chain. At its peak in 1978, it had 278 units across the country. Back then, a T-bone steak dinner with salad, potatoes, and toast was a steal at about $3.99, and even less with coupons. Mr. Steak embodied the epitome of the American lifestyle, affordable USDA choice steak meals. But the tide began to turn for Mr. Steak in the 1980s. The chain, in a bid to adapt to what it believed was a changing public opinion, diversified its menu. Salads, fish, chicken, and other options were added, blurring the brand's identity. This shift caused confusion and a disconnect with its core customers, leading to mistrust in the brand. 
Competition was another major hurdle. As Mr. Steak's focus wavered, competitors stepped in, becoming sanctuaries for alienated patrons. These rivals offered focused menus and consistent quality, drawing away Mr. Steak's customer base. Financial woes compounded the problems. The brand's ambition and diversification plans backfired, leading to quality inconsistencies across locations. Mr. Steak filed for bankruptcy twice in 1987 and again in 1992. New locations ceased to open and existing ones struggled without sufficient funding. In 1993, there was an attempt to revitalize the brand with Mr. Steak's Fire Grill, a modernized Western-themed concept. Despite these efforts, the final Mr. Steak location in St. Charles, Missouri closed its doors in 2009. Some of its Michigan locations found new life as Finley's, where you can still enjoy a steak today. Mr. Steak's legacy serves as a reminder in the business world, sometimes deviating from a successful original formula can lead to a downfall. Fixing what ain't broke was a lesson learned the hard way by this once popular chain.